Right, well look I'm Rex, BK7 MO and what you see here is a piece of equipment for 10 gigahertz which uh, is capable of sending signals to the moon and back and uh, in order to keep uh, it pointing at the moon we have various pieces of equipment first of all azimuth is adjusted this, this ring elevation is adjusted here uh, we have a, an inclinometer that me measures elevation uh, and azimuth around the ring and if perchance the moon was visible we could actually look through this rifle scope and very accurately point at the moon but it doesn't look like it's going to be visible today <laughs> uh, the other thing we do is we line up the moon or the sun uh, and, and peak it on sun noise such that this telescope is pointing exactly at the sun with a little bit of paper that goes off the, uh, the top of that. The equipment itself uh, is a preamplifier here, transverter down here, and a, a 50 watt PA which is over here. It doesn't quite do 50 watts but gets pretty close and a large heat sink with fans. Now all of that feeds down these cables inside the room where we've got a, a essentially a 144 meg set up. We transfer it down to 144 and we're going to use the mode called JT4F. Now JT4F, people wouldn't generally be familiar with it. Most of you are familiar with JT65C on 2 metres and 432. The problem is when you get to these sort of frequencies, the bin width of JD65B, for instance, is only 4.8 hertz. And when you get to these frequencies, you get Doppler shift, differential Doppler from both sides of the moon, which spreads the signal out. Sometimes as much as several hundred hertz. And uh, obviously you can't use bin widths of 4.8 hertz if the signal spreads several hundred hertz. Uh, so, Joe, Joe Taylor, uh, who wrote the WSJT suite, developed this mode called JT4, which we have been able to develop further in conjunction with Joe. I mean, we just keep giving him hints and challenges and he improves it. Uh, and the way the mode now works is, it actually starts with a narrow of inwards and tries to decode the signal. You think, no, it didn't do that. Then it doubles it, and then it doubles it, and then it doubles it again, until it ultimately matches the, uh, the, the bin width to the spreading off the moon, and you get a decode. Uh, and with that technique, we're able to use digital modes up into the microwave frequency. There are a couple of other little tricks we, we use. Because the Doppler, uh, we're not now not talking about the differential Doppler, we're talking about the absolute Doppler, which is mainly a function of us moving on the Earth, you know, because when the moon's rising up there, we're moving. Now the problem is, because we've got a lot of spreading, the it's not a fine line, it's spread mm -hmm. over about 50 hertz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> About 20 guys looking on, is that about right? <laughs> yeah. I, wa I wanted to see the signal tones, to, to, particularly with this, in what this line here is, is integrating it for the full minute and, and shows you how much stronger it is than the noise. And, and when you want RRR, RRR will what we do is actually, which I haven't done, and, and you can see how much stronger that looks yeah. compared to, mm. to, yeah. to, to the messages. Mm. So, who else like to have a go? Come on in. Mm. What am I going to do? Oh. <laughs> <laughs>